What's up everyone, Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Crack Nick and I have an album review for you. So yet another one that came out on the 28th of January was the newest album from The Last 10 Seconds of Life, self-titled. So again, this comes out on the 28th on Unique Leader Records. This is this band's fourth album. They are from Mansfield, Pennsylvania, not to be confused with Mansfield, Ohio. And this is a deathcore band, yet Another deathcore band. Actually, there's been a lot of deathcore this month. It's been kind of loaded with it. And I figured, why not cover yet another one? Again, I'm not the biggest deathcore fan, but maybe one of these albums really wins me over. Honestly, I don't mind the new Fit for an Autopsy. I think it's pretty decent. But um, not all of them have done the best job in terms of winning me over, but that isn't necessarily their goal. I'm not really a fan. So I'm just pretty much looking to see if I still really have any feelings towards this subgenre. And well, it's still a bit of a mixed bag. And this album kind of threw more wrinkles into that as to whether or not I still have feelings towards Deathcore. Now, I have heard of this band and I think I might have seen them. They might have been one of the opening acts when The Faceless actually rolled through here in Toledo way back. Uh, God, I can't even remember how long ago it was, but uh, it was right around the time the last album dropped, which uh, wasn't that great. But I'm pretty sure they were an opening act. And the fact that I'm saying I'm pretty sure they were the opening act does not let you know that I think they were very memorable. I mean, it was just kind of a deathcore act, you know, heavy, lots of breakdowns, big guttural growls, deathcore. You know, pretty much that's deathcore in sort of a nutshell. Now I do know this band is actually on tour with Cattle Decapitation this year, so I might actually get a chance to check them out again, but after this album, I don't know if I want to see them live, at least hear songs from this album. Kind of spoiling it, I really didn't feel this album, like almost at all. The opening two tracks are pretty standard fare for deathcore, you know, Blast beats, guttural vocals, breakdowns. Believe me, breakdowns are gonna be a thing on this. There's a breakdown or eight or nine or 10 of them per song. Sometimes the songs are just one breakdown actually. Deep guttural vocals, screams, and of course, very modern production. In fact, I would say the production on this album is outright sterile, like as sterile as a fucking hospital bed. Like you know, freshly fucking bleached in the mixing room so that it sounds like there's very little in the way of a human element involved. The drums, flat out triggered. I'd say the only thing on here that sounds very natural is the lead guitar tone, which isn't necessarily the best. It's kind of squawky, but it at least sounds organic. The rest of the album just feels compressed to death to the point where it sounds just mechanical and well overproduced. Now again, most of this is just kind of like standard fare deathcore. Generally like kind of inoffensive to me is like, yeah, it's it's heavy, it's brutal, which, you know, is good, but it's also kind of like the lowest common denominator for extreme metal in general. And deathcore usually shoots for being heavier than everything else. They want it just brutal as hell, guitarists be ultra chuggy and, you know, break down some people fucking spinning their fists and kicking their legs around like fucking assholes. That's just me though, but I don't like that shit. Now I'm trying to think about how I can go into this without completely shitting on this album because I don't like generally just shitting on albums entirely. There's usually merit to pretty much everything we listen to. It's just, I kind of struggled to find it, mainly because I'm just not into this album at all. Like. There are only moments on here. I think the Sabbath has some decent riffs on it. I do like the harsh vocals for the most part. I think they're well executed. Uh, it's just what the lyrics are. The lyrics, unfortunately, I can make out some of them and sometimes they are just cringe as fuck. Like, do you remember Crazy Town? Like, that cringe. And yeah, no, I actually own those two Crazy Town albums, and they're both shit, but I still have them, so I really can't talk that much shit, can I? And the drum work is solid when it's not doing kind of just a basic breakdown, which most of the breakdowns on here are very just 
one dimensional, like kind of like the basic breakdown you would hear in almost any deathcore band ever. They're almost always preceded with an isolated vocal, pretty much growling something before, you know, you get a bass drop and breakdown city, but it's generally that, you know, kind of mid-tempo one. Lots of single bass like hits instead of like, you know, the big syncopated rolls. And then of course the slow down, you know, make it even heavier and more uh, chuggy, I don't know. At a certain point, the formula wore thin and by a certain point, I mean before the halfway mark on the album because before the halfway mark of the album, you've heard almost everything you're gonna hear on this album because it just lays on that. But unfortunately, there's some other stuff you're gonna hear later and it doesn't necessarily add to the good column in my mind. The song Vampire, a blood ballad, it's not a ballad at all, there are some clean sections, is probably the most ambitious song on here. It's the longest song, it's over six minutes. Opens up with uh, clean vocal harmonies and clean vocals kind of pop up on here and the clean vocals are, uh, they're not terrible. I just don't like how they're recorded necessarily. He sounds like he's trying to go for almost like a Lane Staley sort of approach, like that Alice in Chains, but Maybe it's not Lane Staley, maybe William Duvall, either way, both good vocalists, but the way it's approached and the way it transitions into the heavier moments or is even paired with the harsh vocals, it just doesn't work. Now, I think this song has probably the most dynamics on here. Of course, there's a fuck ton of breakdowns because this is a deathcore album. There has to be, there's like a fucking quota. You have to fucking hit a certain number of breakdowns per fucking deathcore album, but it does shift around a lot between different styles. There's a really interesting clean bridge, more clean vocals. Uh, and while it's cool to hear them kind of step outside the box and then inevitably just jump right the fuck back in it, the song itself just feels kind of sloppily arranged. Like that felt like was like, well, we need this part where words to come in. I don't know, here, I think. And that really stuck out. Like that stuck out that a lot of this felt forced, at least when it came you know, to like stepping outside of the box a little bit. And unfortunately, when they eventually did get back in the box, they found other shit in the box that I didn't like because new metal starts surfacing and oh my God, it gets so fucking cringy. Hate what you love and glory be to misery. And that's the number two, not T.O. I hate that shit. But anyway, both of these songs have such huge new metal elements. The vocals kind of take on more of a rapt kind of cadence. Like it's not like Artspire where it's like just rapid fire and I guess you could say they're almost rap, but they're really good and how they follow the song is really cool. This you just kind of give them a deathcore song with a new metal groove to it and roll on with some really cringy lyrics, especially Glory Be to Misery. Hate What You Love actually kind of starts like a corn song. Like honestly, as soon as I heard the opening clean melodies, I was just waiting for the words, something takes a part of me to start popping up and like, well, no, it's not there, but it was pretty damn close. I actually looked around to see if this was a cover of a new metal song that I actually missed somewhere in my fucking teens. And it wasn't, this is theirs, I believe. And that's kind of the whole back half of the album is this sort of new metal infused deathcore. Like the front half seems a little bit more focused on just the flat out brutality of deathcore, albeit kind of generic, but the back half kind of has this new metal element that comes in that again, goes from like generic and not necessarily my thing to Oh my God, I'm kind of remembering the worst parts of my teenage musical taste and uh, definitely some of the fashion, I think. And Glory Be to Misery has this weird fucking bridge that pretty much just turns into like a SoundCloud rapper's like heavy metal song. Like I think it goes full trap metal. I, I don't quite get that subset. I don't know what the fuck it is actually, but whatever. It's not very good. The clean vocals completely take over and it just completely changes the song to something else that I don't like. There's a lot of stuff in here that was just fucking off-putting. Sickness in Seattle, which I guess is a play on Sleepless in Seattle, pretty much does the same thing. Breakdowns, sort of a new metal sort of feel in there. 
and then nothing memorable. And that was really the thing on here was after a certain point, nothing stood out. It just became a blur of breakdowns and then other stuff I didn't like. And it's weird because I do like breakdowns. I like hearing them, but I also like hearing them like intermittently. They can't be the main thing on the song. Like unless you're Meshuggah, that should not be your main thing. Because Meshuggah essentially invented all those breakdowns that we've been jocking and there's definitely some diet kindergarten level Meshuggah breakdowns on here. But again, nothing really stands out on here. This is a blur of breakdowns and heaviness you can kind of find any place else. And this is a long album. This is 50 minutes and 34 seconds. And honestly, it's just way too long. Even if you trimmed out the odd instrumentals on here, Wasted, Procession, and Suicide Watch, you'd still have way too long of an album. Those pretty much constitute another like five minutes there. There's not enough stuff on here, or at least enough variety in the music to really justify having that long of an album. Even their attempts to like sort of spice up breakdowns with like a lead harmony or like a weird little techie bit or a different sort of vocal dynamic, they still end up kind of sounding the same from song to song and they inevitably kind of follow the same pattern where you hear the breakdown, isolated vocal, breakdown slows down, rinse, repeat, throw on some new metal, and you kind of have this album. Now, I realize I'm probably not the target demographic for this album, but I wanted to check it out. I wanted to weigh in on it and I wanted to give my honest opinion of it and my honest opinion of it is pretty rough. And that's not a slight against these guys. I'm sure they're nice people. I just happen to not like this album. And yeah, um, I really don't want to shit on this that bad, but I am kind of brutally honest. So I'm going to give this one and a half stars. Again, it's nothing personal. And again, I also understand I'm not the target demographic for this, but this is kind of bad even by like, deathcore standards and I don't mean that as a slight either like good deathcore I actually do like again there's some deathcore out there that I think is really good a lot of the stuff that I grew up with in terms of like deathcore's early run I do really like a lot of that stuff still there's definitely some that hasn't aged as well but this feels very generic and it also shoehorns in something that I don't want to see return which is new metal this kind of reminds me of that uh, Slaughter to Prevail album, which honestly might be a little bit better, but it's still not good. I was really bored by this, and it shouldn't be that boring because it is intense. It is heavier than hell. But again, heavy is sort of the lowest common denominator. Like, that is sort of the baseline for, I think, all metal is heaviness. Like, let's just make it loud and chuggy or, you know, kind of heavy in a certain aspect. This gets that but it doesn't do anything interesting along the way. The knee-jerk transitions into new metal territory, the monotonous breakdowns, it really kind of weighed on me after a while. And I was like, man, I feel like I am kind of stuck like on Groundhog Day. Like I'm waking up every day like, well, it has the same breakdown on the radio, but it would be a different track. At least that's what it said on Spotify. So for me, essentially this thing became an exercise in patience and the more I was patient with it, the more it kind of lost on its score. But again, if you love this band, go out, support their shit, go get their shit, go see them live, go buy a t-shirt. You know, it's just not for me. But if you guys love it, then love the fucking shit out of it and jam it to your heart's content. I will probably not return to this, but who knows? I might go back out of morbid curiosity to see if maybe it's aged a little bit better for me, but probably not. So, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you would like to help us out, there will be a link right down below. And as for shirts, well, they're being made, so when we get them, we'll definitely do a video showing them off, and of course, a giveaway with that because we are getting close to 10,000 subscribers. It is a truly remarkable number that we never thought we'd achieve, but thank you all for helping us get there because this has been a lot of fun and it continues to be fun and we thoroughly enjoy just talking to you and bullshitting with you and this whole experience has been fucking great. And with that, I thank you all once again for watching and we will catch you later.